Jim Cardi of the Patch of Southeastern Connecticut, and I'm here with Toronzo Cannon. How you doing? How you doing, brother? Doing? I am doing great. My first time seeing you live. Oh wow! Right. And uh, just enthralling. Thanks a lot, man. I try to I try to put my best, you know, show out there for us. Now, when I just talked to Bruce Iglauer, you, you, your boss at the record company, yeah, yeah. he said you're 52. Get out. 51. 51. And all a right. half, I guess. So I guess. And and all right. All right. This for me. Thank you, Bruce. But. Uh, <laughs> Your lovely daughter joined you today. No, what a treat. She didn't know that was going to happen. You kind of mean to I, do I that? I just thought about it. I just thought about it in the car. Yep. Anyway, I'm on my way here. Yeah. But uh, she, she's a trooper and yeah. she was a beautiful her, young lady. Her friends was in the audience. And her, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and let me say this with a call for her boyfriend. She said oh. she, her boyfriend was in the audience too and like pushing her to go on. So that's why she was like, can we change the key? Because she wanted to do her. I heard that. Voice, you know. She's like, no, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> But that's great, you know, throwing the baby in the deep end. That's, that's right. That's stage right. time is the only I, way to do it. I tell all the time, and work the crowd, work the audience. Yes, you know? yes. Just like Bruce always tell me, stand to the, the front of the stage, get off behind the microphone, because the microphone really hides you, you know what I mean? Yeah, So yeah. step away from the microphone, but, you know. You're absolutely right. And you know what? I think visually, mm -hmm. you are, you're a handsome man. Oh, well, thank you very much. And you, you know how to play to the crowd mm -hmm. and present yourself in a very good light yeah. and I think that that's so important with social media yeah. and to connect with your fans oh, and yeah. it's stuff that some young entertainers really take yeah. a long time to learn. Yeah. With those, hat, those hats too, I thought about that today too when yeah. I was going to pick up my equipment. Those are hats that I've been using like just been in my shows like I've probably had some of those hats for like 10 years. Right, right, right. And I'm known for like hats or whatever. So I figured, you know, for my fans, like my hats that I retired, you know what I mean? That's and it's about, about five hats, so so hopefully my friends, my fans got some memorabilia and you know, maybe it'd be, you know, it'd be in some museum one day. That's it, I got a shirt from Taj Mahal that I got when I was 25. Very cool, very cool. I was like, cool. yeah, man. Yeah. So tell me how you came up, a little bit about, about your background. Um, South South Chicago, yeah. um, 40, two blocks from the project, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but uh, maybe six blocks from like a you know, wealthier neighborhood, so I was kind of mm -hmm. like right in the middle. But uh, I came up with, uh, there was nobody in my home that were like, was like a, a musical, a musical. Connected. My uncle played drums down at Teresa's, like mm -hmm. the famous Teresa's. Sure. But, he only did that until the other drummer got there, so it wasn't like it was a kid, because, you know, it's the blues and sometimes drummers are late, you know? Yep. But, um, yeah, I, I, when I first started to play, I wanted to play reggae music. Mm. And, you know, that's why I learned my chords and did all of that stuff. Yep. And after I played with a reggae band for about two years, um, I just started playing blues. I couldn't get another reggae band, you know? But yep. I, when I was growing up, blues wasn't a genre to me. It was just music that my parents, my grandparents uh, played. And they, yeah, yep. they, um, they raised my grandparents raised me. But uh, so, you know, I kind of start going to blues jams because they in Chicago is a blues mm, jam. Right, you and fall I'm like, right in yeah, it. I'm like, wow, that's my, my grandfather listened to them songs. Well, my grandmother was middle of the flow, was dancing, mm. you know. So things started to come back and I was getting a full circle moment. And that's what made me start to really embrace like Chicago blues and what was going on because again when I grew up it was just music to me it yeah, wasn't blues yeah. or this or that you know? then that connection did something that I, oh, you yeah. know happens to all of us at, at one age or another oh yeah yeah that's what that's you know? why I slapped me around 23 24 when I first started going to mm. the jams you know? that's great yeah and so tell me a little bit about the record in the pipeline and when it's due oh it's due in September uh, we're mixing it actually this week um, 12 originals again I've been writing all my own songs mm -hmm. From the from the brain of the bus driver, <laughs> um, you know, it, uh, some of, some songs are political, some songs are thought provoking, mm -hmm. some songs it has a funny take on a serious subject like insurance. You know, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. sang that tonight or this afternoon. Yep. And um, you know, just songs that make you, you think. It's not hitting you over the head politically or anything like that. It's just right. songs to make you think. You know, that's great. Well, you know, I can't thank you enough for this time. Is there any last thing that the, the folks need to know? Um, thanks for supporting live music and supporting radio stations like yourself that, you know, that promote blues and, and things like that. You know, that's what keep us, uh, keep us alive and keep people hearing us, you know. So that's thank you great. for what you're doing. For thank us. you, sir. Thank you. All right.